everybody, welcome back. So just want to do kind of a quick video on just a couple of different things. So first up, I got in the German digibook of the Hitcher from 1986, I think is when it came out, starring uh, C. Thomas Howell and Jennifer Jason Lee and Rutger Hauer. Like I'm sure many of you have been waiting for the film to come out in the U.S. for a long time, but they're, um, it's tied up in rights issues. I think it's one of those titles that's tied up over at uh i think hbo there's like a lot of films that are tied up at hbo now on occasion obviously you can they show them on cable but as far as video releases go like so many of them just don't and they're, they're not licensing them out or anything so sometimes the only hope is uh in other countries where rights issues are kind of different in relation to certain distributors and stuff so i got it from diabolic dvd and i've gotten a couple of the German releases too of other films that are sort of tied up in uh, you know different issues and that's uh, like uh, Fright Night 2, uh, Trick or Treat, a couple other ones I'm sort of blanking on at the moment. The Wraith I think that was another one although The Wraith I think actually may come out if the Vestron label actually decides to put out some more some more titles and another thing which you may see behind me which I'm going to turn on in a second Wanted to actually do this separately, but I need to make this a little quick. And that is a the Hot Toys, uh, Avengers, Infinity War, you know, Infinity Gauntlet sort of um, display piece kind of thing. So if you touch the thing here, as you can tell, it lights up. And then after a moment, they sort of start to kind of pulsate and like they're breathing. It's it's a really kind of cool effect. Um, it's a nice display piece, as you can kind of see here. i put it back behind me make sure it's visible nice thing about it is that it's big enough where it can kind of stick out but still kind of small enough so you can find a couple different places to display it uh it's a little expensive um it, it's about a hundred dollars uh now i actually lucked out i had a ton of sideshow collectibles uh points that i've got because of the statues the horror statues and stuff that i've gotten and uh, over the last couple of years and I just, I, they've just been sitting there. I haven't done anything with them. And I was like, you know what? I should probably start using those. Because a part of me started thinking like, man, what if they're just, you know, <laughs> so they're just gone one day, you know? I mean, who knows? I've been kind of eyeing this for a little while because they have two versions of this glove. They have this one, which is the Infinity War one. And they also have one, which is basically the same thing. It just, it says uh, Endgame at the bottom instead of Infinity War. So now if you saw my Endgame review, you know that uh, I had issues with the movie. Well, I did like it. Uh, I do love Infinity War, so I definitely went with the Infinity War version. Um, I'm not actually going to, I don't think I'm going to keep this in here. I think I'm going to actually move this down into the theater room, see it display it um, kind of thing. I sort of was playing with it in the uh, on a shelf uh, sitting next to Nakatomi Plaza and the Back to the Future DeLorean. Because naturally that fits in some way, right? And finally, the new Spider-Man uh, Far From Home trailer came out today now as i said in my end game review i'm sort of going forward with the mcu um gonna play by ear kind of movie by movie i i don't want to have feel the need to have to see like every single film kind of i'm gonna kind of take it uh one film at a time except for spider-man i've been a huge spider-man fan um my whole life i mean when i was a kid i grew up with the spider-man cartoons so you know i there were like reruns of the old like 60s spider-man cartoon when i was really young and then there was uh spider-man is amazing friends on saturday mornings and uh and then going forward kind of all the other incarnations but also uh obviously the sam raimi spider-man movies which um i i really loved um well the first two i loved i mean th three as much as it has some major issues i do still enjoy it and i still think spider-man 2 is actually still one of the best uh comic book films ever made spider-man and batman are like my two favorite comic book sort of heroes i really like how they're handling spider-man in uh the you know the newer films as much as i love the sam raimi ones i it's it's kind of an interesting it's nice that they're sort of different so I can go back and watch the Sam Raimi films and stuff or watch the newer ones. And I, for me, anyway, I don't feel the need. I need to compare them because they, they are different. And I do think uh, Tom Holland was actually really uh, well cast kind of thing, which is funny because every time I started, I was seeing Tom Holland initially when he was first cast. Of course, I, when I think Tom Holland, I think of the you know writer-director of Fright Night, 
<laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you know? Interesting casting choice. But I also remember when Spider-Man shows up in that first like Civil War trailer at the very end. I mean, I geeked out like in a way like I wasn't even expecting because it's like, you know, again, seeing an image from my childhood, you know, all of a sudden up on the screen. And it was like, ah, the new film just looks really good. Now, I have a couple things just to ponder. They're doing the multiverse thing in the new trailer kind of thing. Now, there are a couple spoilers that I, I'm going to try and avoid. But just in case I do, I uh, just if you haven't seen Endgame, there could be some spoilers. If you've managed to avoid spoilers up to this point of Endgame, you haven't seen it. So you may want to click out. I'll try and avoid it, though, um, kind of thing, because there's one. Don't watch the trailer because there's definitely a, a pretty big spoiler in the trailer of, of something that happens in Endgame. So but yeah, because they're doing the multiverse in this film, that can you know you got to be really careful it's kind of like the time travel stuff in endgame where if you're not careful it can get really confusing or really just mess up storylines like very easily so i i you know the best bet in that regard is to keep things as simple as possible now obviously mysterio is in this film played by jake gyllenhaal and which is an interesting choice at first when he showed up in the first trailer i was like oh okay huh, i wonder why they chose him as mysterio but in this trailer seeing him and tom holland together um was interesting i think the two actually you know, even in the couple brief moments in the trailer, I actually think they have good chemistry together, which raised a lot of theories that people had. And some of them are kind of interesting to think about. So because there's the multiverse and kind of going on in this film and Mysterio, who is a villain, doesn't appear to be at least in the trailer. So there's a lot of aspects you can have. I mean, is he someone who becomes a villain because of what happens in this film? Is he someone who is darker superhero that becomes you know that that in his world he's viewed as a hero but in our world he's viewed as a villain because of some of the choices he made you know there's a lot of possibilities there uh one one interesting theory is that he could even be an older peter parker from a different timeline kind of thing which which again kind of comes into play as to why he could be like a darker superhero in his world, but a villain in ours. And the fact that in some weird way that he and Tom Holland actually do look kind of alike in a way. So again, a lot of interesting theories. I don't actually want to speculate too much because I don't want to create sort of my own film in my head before going into this one. I kind of want to just go in and just see what they do. I'll, I'll save the making up my own film uh, after the fact, only if I didn't like it. So. <laughs> One thing I'm not too crazy about is MJ. I, I wasn't too crazy about her character in Homecoming. I thought she was kind of annoying. I'm not sure turning MJ into a bitchy SJW is kind of the right way to go for for this. But I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just me. I did love seeing that Happy is back. John Favreau is back in this. I, I, I really, really liked him in Homecoming. I mean, obviously I liked him in the Iron Man films and everything. I mean, he um, obviously directed Iron Man 1 and 2 has been a producer in most of the films going forward because he's such a good actor he's good at comedy and I think he and Tom Holland really like their humor their sort of combative humor back and forth I think it I think is really funny so I hope he's kind of a regular going forward whenever like Spider-Man is around and overall I mean I'm pretty excited about the film I mean it's you know again Spider-Man means a lot to me um, like I said, you know, going forward with the MCU, I, I'll kind of wait and see on, on some of the films, but Spider-Man will always kind of get me to, uh, to show up. That'll be kind of an easy one for me. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It's a good movie, which I, I, I would suspect it would, it will be, I think it'd be more like, how good will it be? Will it just be good or will it be great? So that's for me that's probably where it's gonna lie so so let me know your thoughts on the spider-man trailer and everything which you like which you don't like if it's anything you're excited for and as always i will see you on the next one